Stellar recovery for the market. The Nifty Bank is now up 420 points. Remember, at one point it had gone into the red from a 1,000-point gain. So nearly 40% of those declines have been recovered. Let's see where we go from here. The Nifty once again inching closer towards that 24,900 mark itself. Uh, the mid-caps continuing to do well. Ultratech has moved to the high point of trade. Let's get you excerpts from our exclusive conversation with the Union Food Secretary, Manisha Gupta, caught up with Sanjeev Chopra, who's the Secretary, Department of Food and Public Distribution, quizzed him on the food industry concerns around fund allocation and policy implementations in on the union budget. Uh, hear that conversation. I don't think that kind of an impression is uh, really correct because uh, from the times, uh, let's say, of 2013-14, when the allocation for agriculture was about 15,000 crores, uh, to the present position when we have agriculture and light sectors with a total allocation about 1.5 lakh crores, I think we've come a long way in the past 10 years in case allocation has risen so steeply. That just reflects the commitment of the government for the farm sector and for the farmers. There have been concerns, of course, when you look at pulses and edible oil, the kind of import that we do. And uh, inflation concerns have led to a lot of measures that the government took in the last six or 18 months as well. Are, are we looking at now easing off from that? Do you see a situation where you think that the things are getting comfortable? Uh, so we have a very institutionalized mechanism of monitoring the prices in the government. And every week, uh, these uh, prices are reviewed by a committee of secretaries. Uh, and then later on, we also apprise the, uh, the committee of ministers. So uh, we are maintaining a close watch. As of now, the uh, prices of uh, the pulses, uh, particularly uh, Tur and, uh, and uh, Urad, so they are still in the, in the red zone and quite appreciably so. Mm. So we are uh, watching the situation and uh, any easing of the restriction that have been imposed, whether it is uh, the pulses or whether it is wheat and rice or sugar, so they would be taken at an opportune time when the government feels that the, the position or the, the, the stability in the sector warrants a kind of restriction to be uh, done away with. Mm. Uh, how difficult is it balancing the farmers where you have promised double income? And we have seen a lot of work being done there because of the kind of increase we've seen in MSP. The other is the stakeholders, uh, which includes of industry, exporters, importers, and then the consumers. Oh, it's definitely very tough. It's not easy at all. It's a tightrope walk. We need to keep the uh, interests of all the stakeholders, taking the sugar sector in, in particular, in case, let's say, we have the sugar mills who have their own interests. The consumers also want stable prices. The producers, the uh, sugar farmers, sugarcane farmers, also would like increased FRP. So maintaining a balance between these interests, which are at times a little conflicting, is certainly uh, requires some bit of uh, tighter walking. I'm assuming you meet a lot of industry guys. And one thing that resonates from everywhere is a long-term, uh, predictable, sustainable policy. True. Uh, uh, the policy, of course, has to be uh, something that uh, can be relied upon for the, for the short to medium term. And the government has ensured, to the extent possible, that the policies that are brought about in terms of the various uh, crops that uh, the ministry deals with are kept at a level where there is no, there are no, uh, well, say, uh, no surprises uh, which are just sprung on the industry. Uh, but having said that, let me also say that the government is also conscious that these surprises sometimes become inevitable, keeping in view the interests of the economy and keeping in view the interests of the 140 uh, billion consumers of the country. Mm. 140 crore consumers of the country. I'm sorry. So when we are looking at sugar now, and uh, this is an area, as we were all talking, I mean, we were, we were one of the leaders when it comes to uh, uh, bio alliance there. Uh, ethanol Alliance. How, how are you looking at the push here? Because as you've been saying, I was hearing your speech and uh, water concerns and of course the price concerns and the other grains are being part of this as well. Are, are we looking now to a roadmap which, which tells us on what can we expect in sense of ethanol blending? People have talked about flexi fuels, etc. So there's a lot on your plate right now, even just with this one sector. True. So, uh, so broadly, the picture is that uh, in case we are now aspiring to have a 15% ethanol blending this year, and that is up from about 1.5% blending, which was there in 2013-14. So we really have come a long way, and uh, I think globally it's accepted that India has done wonders in the uh, in the blending ethanol blending program. And going forward, while uh, the reliance was uh, majorly on molasses-based uh, feedstock. Going forward, that kind of reliance uh, would be there, but it will be tempered by uh, an equal reliance on the grains, particularly maize. Mm. So we've seen this year, we've had a sharp jump in the uh, ethanol that we got from maize. And going forward also, we, we expect that in the next, uh, next two years or so, when we are looking at 20% blending, 
uh, maybe half the uh, ethanol would be coming from sugar and roughly half would be coming from grain. Mr. Chopra, this is my final question. And if there are two things that are top of your mind right now when it comes to agriculture and food, what are they? So agriculture, of course, uh, the first major uh, thing that we need to look at is the crop diversification because of the ecological uh, damages uh, which are being caused by the, uh, by the uh, selection of a particular monocropping, if I can call it that, particularly in the northern part of the country. So that is one thing that really uh, is uh, of concern to us. How do we change the cropping pattern in the country? And the second one, of course, is to how we can have more reliance, self-reliance in pulses and oilseeds.